Melody, thanks so much for joining me, for taking time from your busy schedule, and welcome to the Potential of Music.com podcast. Thanks very much. Melody, I've given our listeners just a brief overview of your story, but tell me, you, you played piano prior to your accident, is that correct? Yes, I am. Um, when I was 16, I started playing in piano bars in Philadelphia. Right. And did you have any knowledge at that time of music therapy prior to that? No. Um, it was introduced to me, surprisingly, um, a few months after I was beginning recovery from an accident. Right. And what did the what did the doctor that suggested music therapy tell you about what that could do for your recovery? How would that work in the healing process? Well, for me in particular, um, there was duality because the moment that I entered his office was sort of um, sort of awkward because I, I brought all of my medicine and said, you know, I really don't want to take any medicine anymore. And I was right. upset and frustrated and. I had gotten very, very ill from just the large amounts of medication I'd been given. Right. I, I decided, you know, I would rather be healthy and in pain than sick and not. So as a pain management doctor, he was a bit frustrated, and he, he said, well, I, I'm not sure what I can do for you, but I know that the first thing is you need to find something that makes you happy. Right. Because um, that'll take your mind off the pain. He said, so what did you used to do before the accident? And my mom was there, and she said... Uh, she used to play piano in piano bars, and his eyes kind of lit up, and he said, you have to do music. He said, it's, I don't know why I didn't think of it before, he said, but for you personally, because it's something you did, it would be very beneficial, but also um, music is one of the only things that helps to reconnect neural pathways in your brain. Okay. And I had suffered a, a number of injuries, one of which was a, a TBI, which is a brain injury. And, uh, right. I had significant short-term memory issues that made it very difficult to get through a normal day. Right. So um, his thought was that music would, would bring me sort of an ephemeral joy, but also give me an opportunity to um, advance cognitively. Right. And so you picked, I guess uh, there were some issues, though, with piano because you had trouble sitting up. Is that correct? Yeah, I had fractures in the front and the back of my pelvis, so to sit for more than about 10 minutes was excruciating. And so you went to the you migrated to the guitar at that time. Um, not so simply, but yeah, I I actually went home devastated and kind of I didn't know how I'd fulfill that request. Right. Um, I was bedridden and I was lying on my back, and my mom suggested the guitar, and she had one, so she handed it to me, and I I learned bit by bit as I tried to pick out things and learn the mechanics of how it worked. I found it similar to the piano in that you're using both your hands and there's a hammering action on the left right. and, you know, more activity on the right as I, I tend to finger rather than pick, but it still was very, very different to try and use your hands in a different way. And, right. Um, it took a long time to even pick out maybe four or five notes. On right. And what was your total, uh, I'd say the total recovery time, what was the time that you were using music and really sort of considered the recovery time? I know it's certainly an everyday process, but... Uh, I guess bedridding was for about a year, is that right? Well, you know, recovery is a funny word, and it's definitely something yeah. that I continue to do on a daily basis. But right. um, as far as going from bed to foot with any kind of assistance, whether it be a wheelchair, a walker, a cane, it was probably a good 12 to 16 months. Wow, okay. And tell me, were you keenly aware of the what music was doing for your recovery and your healing, or was it sort of a something that worked on a more subconscious level? No, it was very subtle. And in the beginning, I'm sure somewhat frustrating in the sense that if anyone would be looking for progress while going through a recovery, right. as far as like marked changes, you don't really get indications of, of what those changes are in, you know, short hurdles, so to speak. You get them in, like, multiple rounds of the track. So you might have to go through many, many months of seeing nothing, and then suddenly one day part of whatever is, is difficult as far as executive functioning or cognitive abilities right. will have changed, where, for, for instance, in my case, um, I suffered from, from anomia, which is the inability to form words. Right. It was very frustrating. I would be 
you know, trying to answer questions and, and I couldn't gather the words that were necessary. So um, as time went on, slowly the, the pace at which I could speak picked up. And then additionally, I had uh, short-term memory problems that were such such an issue that um, right. at the end of the day, I couldn't recall what I had done in the beginning. Wow. So uh, you can imagine a little frustrating. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> and, and it makes your days feel long. And um, it was probably a year or two afterwards, but at one point there was a moment when I had um, almost a deja vu uh, feeling about something that someone was speaking to me about. It was something that um, therapists and doctors call trigger response. Okay. That thing that happens with most people where you don't really remember what happened, but your your friend might be talking to you. And you remember that time when blah, 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 and immediately you have no idea, but as they go on and they speak about it and they talk about the event and they give you details, right. you go, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, kind of, and little things come back to you. Right. That, that trickling of information that comes from another source allows you to slowly put together the pieces and you, you, you have what's called a trigger response. Wow, so it was—it was, I guess, doubly challenging. You were facing just both the physical and, I guess, the again the memory issues. So you're really facing it on two fronts, I guess. Yeah, there were there were many fronts, and of course, there's always the the developing phase of, of just going through the the normal emotional path of what it is to be dealing with pain. I mean, right. In many ways, that's challenging on its own as well, and that came about <laughs> in bits and pieces too. Yeah, and what about just in terms of having music uh, not only as a, a healing, but uh, also just the cathartic process, just from a just to have something to lean on in terms of your emotions through that process? Well, it's incredibly beneficial. I mean, as a normal human being without any real significant affliction, you, you can use music for everything. I mean, we use it in our cafes to pass the hours while we're working. We yeah. use it in restaurants to set the mood. We use you know, box for babies to help develop their intelligence and soothe them while they're teething. You know, there's music gets us through long car rides across the country. It's it's what helps pull us through to the next place. And and more importantly, as you go through things that are emotionally, you know, sort of squashing, right. you, you lean on music to to kind of make you feel like that's okay, or to do the opposite and pull you out. So it's Music is really important for us, yeah. just as a human race, you know, it's yeah. something that, that kind of carries us through. And I truly believe it's the universal language. Yeah. You know, you need no comprehension of French to listen to a song by Edith Piaf and feel the emotion of what she's singing. Right. And so I guess, yeah, really the uh, the healing of the heart is really sort of the vital step, I guess, of, of healing the body as well. Healing of the heart and the healing of the mind. Yeah.